trust. Friends, dying Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Bill put on Christ. So in Christ, may Bill be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. But we will know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus also said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. So friends, we have gathered here to praise God, amen, and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Bill. We come together in grief acknowledging our human loss may God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort in sorrow hope in death resurrection
Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom, you, whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially we praise you for Bill, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these, grant your peace. Let perpetual light, per, 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 perpetual light shine upon them and help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, not med, made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we will have scripture reading by some of Bill's granddaughters. Will y'all come at this time to read the scripture for us? Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, our Lord, like streams in the Negev. Though those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. Colossians 1.10 We pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work growing the knowledge of God. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters and restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And may God bless the reading of his holy word. At this time, we give each and every one of you the opportunity to briefly voice your thoughts of thankfulness to God for the grace you have received in and through the life of Bill. Now, if you desire to voice your thoughts, you can just simply raise your hand and someone will bring the microphone to you. How about we start with Jamie first? I'm 
sitting over here because this is where our family always sat, back here on the end. Okay. So my dad and I would always say, have this running argument. He would say I was going to get up and say something. And I would say, no, I'm not. He'd say, yes, you are. I went back and forth, so here I am. When I was about five years old, for the, those of you that knew where the old Plaza Drug was, he took me in with him one day after church. And he had a, a friend that worked in there, and they bannered back and forth all the time. And one day, he must have given her a little bit harsher that I didn't hear because she gave it right back to him. And I heard that, and I put my hands on my hips, and I said, nobody talks to my daddy like that. <laughs> well, she was so embarrassed that she told him she would never speak to him again as long as I was around. <laughs> and thank you all for coming today. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Mike Allen, and I'm a Big Stone Gap lifer. And uh, a side note to begin with, uh, I had a message last Saturday afternoon to call Jamie as soon as possible. And I was happened to be at Thompson Bowling Arena. And I suspected maybe what the message was. And as soon as I was able uh, to get free and get away from people, I called Jamie. And she told me that God had called her dad, Bill Hendrick, home. And, uh, we laughed and we cried together on the phone that afternoon, but I can tell you it was probably the only time I've ever been satisfied with a Kentucky victory. <laughs> it just happened to be the right day. But uh, I have, uh, Bill Hendrick and Mike Allen have loved each other for a long, long time. Uh, I worked for Bill when I was 10 years old. I wrote an article for the Post called Batter Up. And uh, I don't, I think it was an unpaid internship is the way he termed that. <laughs> but we became friends and then as I, I grew older and he covered our high school basketball teams and then I got out and came back and began in business. He was my dear, dear friend and confidant and mentor. And we shared many, many times and stories along the way. And um, a couple things, I've, I've heard it said before, if you can, uh, if you can spend a day, and that day your emotions move you to laugh heartedly, and that same day your emotions can move you to cry deeply, and that same day you can spend time in meditation with the Lord, that's a really, really full, satisfying day. And I really believe my friend Bill Hendricks spent many days like that. Amen. Um, I watched the video last night. And uh, it really just told the story. And that story really was about several things in my mind. And it really wasn't about happiness or sadness. But what I saw in that video was nothing but joy. And Bill, Bill loved God. And he loved his family. And as you all know, he dearly, dearly loved his community. Amen. And I know you said briefly, so I will be briefly. Amen. Uh, I didn't, I didn't come up with this, but I heard it said, and it fits for certain people in our community, and certainly for Bill. But when our days are gone and we've come to the end of the road, nobody will really ask you or wonder about uh, what type car you drove and how expensive it was or uh, where you went on vacation or the summer home you had or what your 401K had in it or anything like that. They'll really just wonder about how would you make them feel. And Bill Hendrick made you feel special, and Bill Hendrick loved you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Wes, back in the back. Oh, go ahead, Jack Mack. Jack McClanahan. Jack Mack, most everybody. Uh, I had a privilege this past fall of sitting on that porch with Bill next to that beautiful wisteria that it was so much part of the house. Interviewed him. Thank heavens we got it on tape. 
I asked Bill, I said, what was the most memorable news that you ever covered? Never wavered. It was the Gary Powers story. Now, we've got to keep in time, that was 1962 or thereabouts. There was very little television. And all the news media across the world was trying to get in touch with him. And they came to Bill because he was with the newspaper. And he said he was clearing house for all of them. But he brought so much to light, as he did with so many things. Physically, he towered over most of us. But figuratively, he watched over our whole community. I don't care how bad the situation might be, he could always have a smile that could melt the coldest heart. And he never met a stranger. I've been a little bit involved with my community most of my life. And it's through people like Bill who have mentored me to care about our community and where it's going. And I, too, treasure those seats where we sat behind Bill and Jean many years. And those Sundays will always be in my heart. Thank you for such a wonderful life, so well lived. Thank you. Hello, I'm Wes Polly. Um, Knew, well, knew Bill all my life, known the family all my life, and uh, knew his passion for a lot of things, not the least of which was those Kentucky Wildcats. We had a lot of good fun poking back and forth. My dad and he uh, went back and forth quite a bit. Might have had a side bet here or there for a few of the games, uh, but just a memory of, of one of those that I think is, is uh, I, I wanted to share. It just makes me laugh, and, and I've heard him tell it, and I've heard others tell it. But uh, many years ago, uh, as many of us used to go and travel to Knoxville for ball games, um, Bill took the opportunity to go down and represent the Wildcats, and he did so in glorious fashion. He had that Kentucky blue blazer on with the crest of the university right there on it, and I mean, he was proud. And they marched right into there and sat down amongst all that orange. And uh, it wasn't a good day for the Wildcats that day. They were, getting, they were getting put on to pretty good. And at one point he said, goodness gracious, what, what else could happen? And about that time, bird pooped right on that blue blazer. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, it's like, you know, oh gosh. And he goes, well, I guess I should really consider myself blessed. At least cows don't fly. <laughs> and busted up everybody around him. So it just goes to show where he could take something, maybe it wasn't the best situation, and make it a lot of fun for everybody around him and for himself. And it just goes to show the type of man he was, and I think the type of man that all of us as gentlemen want to be. And as persons, the type of persons we want to be. Thank you. Paige has her hand up. I, I, my my name's Mark Blanton, and I've known Bill for a long time with Jamie. We went to school together. I can remember when he first came to St. Mary's, I was a pharmacist there. My girls were real little. They would come down and see him, and he would scare them to death because he was such a big man, had a large voice. But behind that large voice and big man was a gentle child. He loved everybody. He loved his community. He loved his family. The one thing that I can say, he loved his cats, like my wife. They both bleed blue. Jamie, we talked on the Saturday, and we talked, and she said, my dad has passed away. And I said, what a great day. What a wonderful day. He's with the Lord. It's a much better place. And she said, yeah, and the cats won. <laughs> <laughs> what I hope is that I have three daughters. I hope my daughters are as wonderful as you that took the time to take care of their dad. I love you. Page.
Hi, I'm Paige Hendrick. I'm, I'm the youngest. I'm the one that disappeared after I turned 18. I could tell lots and lots of stories, but I'll tell a funny one, and this should have been right after Wes's. But, um, so I was about five years old, and one of the days that he was taking me to the golf course, so we are driving through the valley. And being curious, I was like, Dad, how do cows stand on the side of the hill like that for so long? As easy as easy goes, he says, because their legs are shorter on one side. <laughs> being five years old, I took that as the gospel. <laughs> <laughs> so, never thought any more about it. Then I was about 17, and this young nephew of mine, we were taking him to the airport, and we're driving, for those of you who know, uh, Wadlow Gap Road, and he and I are sitting in the back seat, and mom and dad are in the front, and he said, Aunt Paige, have you ever wondered how cows have shorter legs <laughs> or uh, stand on the side of a hill? Hadn't thought about it since I was five, but I said it just as easy, and I was like, yeah, because they have shorter legs. <laughs> this guy right here almost wrecked the car laughing. <laughs> <laughs> he was the best dad ever. <laughs> Any others? I had uh, agonized over what to say, and you, most of you have already taken what I wanted to say. Um, but I have a couple things. One is uh, he mentored his family as well. And I had 44 years of that. He didn't have sons. And us sons-in-law kind of made up for that, made up for that along with Tim. <laughs> Tim Trent. Yep. We, we were his sons. And uh, I looked to his guidance for 44 years, and my only regret is I really didn't think about his guidance early on. I, you know, now I do, but um, all that time, I just never remember having a cross word with him. I mean, and he should have, because I, I could come at him pretty hard. You know, we, ban we did a little more than banter at times. Um, but I do remember, and I want to remember that, he, he was so kind. And he taught that kindness to us, and he taught us how to be kind by being able to walk up to anybody and talk to them. <clears throat> Sometimes the people that were kind of in the corner. He just knew how to do that, and that was such a gift. But I do remember one funny. We were at Thanksgiving. <laughs> this is about, I don't, gosh, this might have been 25 years ago. It was a long time ago. And we were sitting around the table, and I think we were standing there, and the table was extended way into the foyer. We had so many people there. And uh, Bill was at the end of the table, and I think we um, said grace, and we got ready to sit down. And, and Gene was at the one end, and Bill was at the other. And Gene said in Gene's voice, Now, Bill, be careful about that chair. Well, Bill sat in this captain's chair, and I remember um, Chris was on one side, and I was on the other. And he sat down. And this chair disintegrated as he sat down. And it just went in slow motion. He hit there, and he just like slowly just fell on the floor. Now, you would think two son-in-laws that, you know, kind of cared for the man would have jumped right up. But we were too busy crying, laughing to be able to help him. It was, it was absolutely hilarious. And he took it like everything else. He got up, dusted himself off. I'm not sure many of us would have not been just a little angry at somebody. I would have blamed my wife if it happened to me. Um, but he didn't blame us all. We got him another chair and we had dinner. But that was uh, one of the funniest things I ever saw Bill do. Anyone else? Peggy? It's Peggy Beverly. I'm Peggy Beverly, and I guess I've known Bill longer than anyone else here. <laughs> we grew up in the same church, 
I don't remember too much about Bill, a, a young, very young boy, because I was four years older than he, and you know when you're four years older, you're a grown. Anyway, Bill and I had a, 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 an experience. It was during the war, and uh, Robert's brothers had a well-known basketball team, and they were playing in Norton. I don't remember who they were playing, but anyway, you had to buy a war bond to go to the game. Well, my grandmother uh, bought a bond, and she gave it to me. And I went to the drugstore. That's where we all met to go to the ball games and so forth. But when I got there, there was no one there but Bill. So Bill and I started to the ball game, and we were walking up the street, and there was a hill beside the post office in Norton that goes up to the Methodist Church. Well, there were a group of men there, and they were acting strange, so Bill and I stopped to see what was going on. And all at once, one man pulled away from the others, and bang, 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 he went down. Well, Bill and I didn't know what to do, but we ran. <laughs> and neither one of us saw much of that ball game. <laughs> Diane, did you have one? Um, I'm Diane. I guess everybody knows that. Um, you all saw a part of Dad, and we saw a part of Dad. So when he would come home, the man could, he memorized things. I mean, we, he'd be sitting in his chair, and he would quote the poem, The Raven. Probably no one really knows what that is anymore, but it's an Edgar Allan Poe, and it's this long. He could recite... <laughs> like the whole thing. But he loved music, maybe something else that you all don't really know. He loved sitting back there and watch, listening to the choir. Um, but he also sang. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I record, Jamie and I recorded a couple of things, and I hope you don't mind. Pastor, please don't be upset. <laughs> we wanted to play. One little thing of dad singing. After that, yeah. After that, When you're perfect in every way, I hate to look into the mirror. I get better looking each day. To know me is to love me. I must be a hell of a man. Oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble. But I'm doing the best that I can. <laughs>
They're appropriate to give God some praise for that. Please stand for the reading of the scripture. Psalm 138. I give thanks to you with all my heart, Lord. I sing your praise before all other gods. I bow toward your holy temple and thank your name for your loyal love and faithfulness because you have made your name and word greater than anything else on the day I cried out you answered me you encouraged me with inner strength let all the earth's rulers give thanks to you Lord when they hear what you say let them sing about the Lord's ways because the Lord's glory is so great even though the Lord is high he can still see the lowly but God keeps his distance from the arrogant whenever I am in deep trouble you make me live again you send your power against my enemy's wrath you save me with your strong hand the Lord will do all this for my sake your faithful love lasts forever Lord don't let go of what your hands have made this is the word of God for the people of God thanks be to God you may be seated Lord we thank you for this day your presence is here we thank you for the wonderful stories the wonderful singing we thank you for a life well lived. We thank you for Bill. And Lord, at this time, I ask you to anoint me to bring encouragement to the lives of the people here today. We need you. And we trust you. And I ask these things now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, friends, there is a lot of benefits. Uh, there are a lot of benefits uh, in having someone close to you who is willing to make situations better for you. One significant supporter that I've had throughout my life has been my brother. He's older, stronger, wiser, and taller, and even wealthier than me but yet he's willing to do things for me to make my life better and I can count on him for doing that and by the testimonies we've heard today I trust and I believe that you have been touched significantly by Bill because Bill has, in one way or another, made your life better. If he has done so, can you, just for a moment, stand and give God some praise for blessing you with Bill? Come on, give God some praise for Bill's life. You may be seated. So we heard it today. That Bill has intervened in many persons' lives, which resulted in lives being better off. In our text this afternoon, we discovered that the Lord is not too big, nor too glorious or too far away to intervene in our lives. The psalmist praised the Lord for his unfailing love and faithfulness. Also, he testified about how 
God heard his cries and answered his cries by giving him strength and confidence to live another day. The psalmist praised God because he realized that God holds the lowly and humble in high regard. Now, it's good to know and important to know that throughout biblical history, we discover the different ways that the Lord intervened in the lives of his people. And the Lord did so through visions, dreams, angelic messengers, prophets, kings, men, women, and priests. You see, through these avenues and people, the Lord communicated his plan for the lives of his people. And ultimately, we discover, church, that his grand redemptive plan to make life better for all humanity was to be seen and experienced through the intervention, intervention of his son, Jesus Christ. You see, through his son, Jesus Christ, all matter of sin was taken care of. Through Jesus Christ, who is our advocate to the Father, repair the fractured relationship between God and humanity. The war of race, social status, and inequality were settled once and for all because Jesus Christ came for all. Now all, every human being, without a doubt, can know that the Lord, who is gloriously glorious and high, is near the lowly and humble because of what Jesus did for us. I praise the Lord for one day intervening in Bill's life. In 1968, he and his beloved Jean became members of this church. You see, the important thing about membership here is that there are some requirements for becoming a member. First, one must affirm that Jesus Christ has intervened in their life and made their life better. The second is that you are required to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, which serves as the public witness that you are aware of the Lord's intervention in your life. And from that day forward, you are going to follow him. Thus, both Gene and Bill did not leave any doubt to anyone here today, to their family, and to their friends, and whom they trusted in and served. And Bill was very committed to the church. And I recall him telling me how committed he was and how he was present most Sundays. And then with a great big smile on his face, he said, except on those days I went to the golf course. So as a believer and follower of Christ, we trust that he will continue to make our everyday lives better and ultimately move us to a new residence in heaven for all eternity. Jesus said in John 14, verse 1, don't be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. My father's house has many room to spare. If that weren't the case, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When I go to prepare a place for you, I will return and take you to be with me so that where I am, you will be too. Jesus simply 
let all of his followers know here by giving them the assurance that when they pass away, he will welcome them to heaven. The family has reported to me that they felt that Jean was transitioning into her new heavenly home and that she did so very peacefully. They sensed that she was going home soon because some days before she died, she told him about a vision she had. She told him that she saw herself sitting at the bottom of a stairway that she knew deep down within her that she was soon going to have to climb. Perhaps that was the Lord's way to communicate to Jean and those closest to her that he was prepared to make her life better. Just a couple of days ago, Jamie reported to me that in the days leading up to Bill's passing, that she observed him multiple times, raising his arms upwards as if he was saying to Jesus, I'm ready for you to take all my suffering away and welcome me to my heavenly home to make my life better. Friends, we all ought to praise God for continuously intervening in our lives. First, by showing us his great love and mercy to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And ultimately, having the trust in the fact that one day when our bodies give up, when the world becomes too heavy for us to carry and live in, that Jesus will intervene and welcome us home as well. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for your Son, Jesus. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you, Lord God, for sending us Bill. What a legacy he has left. And as we remember and cherish all the wonderful stories about him, and when we get sad, we begin to miss him tremendously. Lord God, we ask for your peace to come and comfort us. Remind us that you called him home and that he is with you. We give you all honor, glory, and praise. And ask these things now in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Now at this time we ask you to stand and let us all recite the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is number 593, Here I Am, Lord.
may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Head to the cemetery. <laughs>